Hey guys, it's Treya and I'm back with another natural hair horror story. You guys have been loving my horror story videos here on my channel, so I'm just going to keep them coming. So I have another story and this one, I didn't think that it could get worse than the first one. But then the second one came. But now this third story, you guys, like what is going on? Like why are you guys... Like, I really don't know what's going on. It's that many, like, crazy hairstylists out there? Like, that's just crazy. But anyway, if you're new here, I would love for you to stick around and join us. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you're already subscribed, make sure to hashtag Team Hearts in the comments because I'm going to be liking and commenting back to everyone. All right, guys, so this story is crazy. So I'm going to need you guys to brace yourself. I'm going to be including pictures. So if you feel a little squeamish, I'll give a disclaimer before I put the picture in, but you guys, this story right here is something else. Okay, so the email reads, Hello Treya, I'm a new subscriber and I've been loving your video so much and stumbled upon your natural hair horror story video and I knew I had to submit my story. Oh, by the way, if you guys have a natural hair horror story, definitely email it to me and I will feature it in a video. Last year in September, I was in my hometown of Toronto and was staying in a town called Whitby where I was staying with my aunt and cousins. I found this girl 15 minutes away who did fixing sew-ins for about $70. First warning, I shouldn't have avoided. I saw pictures on her Instagram and she seemed legit. Y'all, don't trust them pictures. Pictures aren't always accurate, but anyway. I saw pictures on her Instagram and she seemed legit so I booked my appointment and had my cousin drive me to her home where she did her business. My cousin told me to quickly look in her house and see if it's sketchy because the area where she lived in was kind of ghetto and run down. She opened the door and I came in and it seemed fine at first and I waved off my cousin to go on. The more I went inside the house it was filthy and crowded with garbage. Another warning. She was doing someone's hair before me, so I sat and waited until she was done. When she was finished, she told me to come and sit, and she started braiding my hair, and it didn't feel that tight when she was braiding it, and even when she started to sew in the hair, it didn't feel that tight till afterwards. She sprayed my leave out with water, and I looked in the mirror, and my leave out looked like a poofy cotton ball on top of the 3C curls that were installed. She didn't even try to blend. I looked like a wet dog with silky hair underneath. I couldn't believe she did such a poor job. Told y'all, them pictures. It wasn't even worth it, but anyways, I sat down and texted my cousin and that's when the pain started to come. My hair felt like it was on fire. I thought I was going to faint. I asked the stylist for juice to help me, but she said that she didn't have any. She asked me if it was tight and she said, I'm sorry. When my cousin came, I staggered towards the car. While I was sitting down in the car, I got hot flashes, I was cold sweating profusely, and felt like I was losing consciousness. I was on the verge of fainting. My scalp was on fire and I felt like I couldn't breathe. I was in so much freaking pain. Oh my God. I went back inside my aunt's house and she gave me some bananas to eat. She said it would help me. It helped my body, but my head was so painful. I called my mom from Atlanta, where I live, crying to her, screaming in pain, telling her how much pain I was in, and she told me to take it out. But I felt bad because my aunt paid for it and I tried to stick it out. Aww. That night and the next three nights, I could not sleep because it hurt to lay my head down on my pillow. I was leaving to go back home to Atlanta the following Tuesday, so it was three days more, so I decided to take it out when I reached home. How did you... How did you endure that pain for so long? Oh my goodness. When I reached home, I took the hair out immediately. There was a scab on the top of my head. It was little, so I picked it off. The next day, the next day I woke up in intense pain from my scalp to my lower jaw. Painful lymph nodes appeared on my skin. I immediately went to the doctor and he said I had a severe scalp infection. What in the world? What did she use? What did she do? What in the world? He warned me in a few days it may cause cluster-like headaches. 
he prescribed me four different medications. Oh no, she, she would have been paying some hospital bills or something like, what? And then the real pain began. We didn't get there yet? OMG, my scalp was in severe pain. I had cluster headaches for about a week and it was the most excruciating, painful experience in my life ever. Just reading this story is making my freaking head hurt. I couldn't walk far without my head feeling like a hammer was being slammed on my skull. I had to lay in bed until I felt better. I cried for days hoping the pain would stop. In the middle of my scalp, my hair came out in chunks and chunks and it would fall out in huge clumps. I'm gonna insert the picture now, so if you're squeamish, gotta skip past. I already have self-esteem and confidence issues, so this definitely took a toll on my confidence. Oh my goodness. My hair is just now starting to grow back. Well, she said it grew back in January. It's super short, but it's slowly growing back. Now I'll be more cautious on who does my hair and get real reviews online or whatever. But for now, I'm taking care of my hair and learning to do protective styles on myself because I don't want anyone touching my hair for a while. I did box braids by myself and it covered the spot and it turned out great. I know to not make this mistake again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I feel like I'm just speechless and lost for words like I just huh. <sighs> the pain you guys endure from these hairstylists oh my goodness like mm -mm -mm. this is so freaking crazy now I know the saying the saying is beauty is pain but not this day on much pain not this much pain you shouldn't go through this much pain to be beautiful like this is ridiculous this is definitely not what they meant first of all you guys need to stop trusting these stylists. These wanna be hairstylists that didn't go to school. And I'm not saying that, you know, in order to be a good hairstylist, you have to go to school. But you need to at least go to someone that has some experience, some knowledge on the craft. Ugh! Because it's just like, you can't go off of an Instagram picture. Like, you can't at least get some hearsay from someone else I don't know uh, I don't know read some reviews some Yelp reviews something because you guys like this can't keep happening like you guys can't be experiencing these types of things you definitely want to make sure that you go to someone that has at least some knowledge on the craft because it's so much more than just doing hair and this was ridiculous this is literally ridiculous like the pictures are just like like I'm cringing like mm, mm, mm. to see what you had to endure is just like about to make me freaking cry it's about to make my eyes water like mm, mm, mm. <sighs> you were in so much pain that you could barely walk that it felt like a hammer was being slammed on you like that is painful and to add into all of that pain you have self-esteem and confidence issues so i just know how many emotions you were going through <sighs> girl i feel so bad i feel so freaking bad especially because a lot of girls rely on their hair to you know help boost their confidence when you look good you start to feel good and the fact that you had to deal with this i know i know i know it took a toll on your confidence Oh, girl. And I'm really wondering how this all happened because you said that when she started braiding your hair, it didn't feel tight. And when she started to sew in the hair, it didn't feel tight until afterwards. So I don't know, was it the product she used that you had a reaction from or like what? But that is so crazy. And I'm so sorry that you had to experience that. Um, and I also want to know if you ever like went back to her and told her what happened or what you experienced, tried to get your money back or like, did you just chalk it up or what? Well, I would love to know what the outcome of that was and what she would say, but this is ridiculous. And this just goes to show that you just can't trust everybody. You, you really, really can't. You definitely need to check some reviews and... 
I mean, I guess it's just a toss up anyway because anybody can write a fake review and you know, but <sighs> when you start to learn to do your own hair, then you'll be good to go. Because no one has sent me a horror story of them messing up their hair or ruining their hair. Everybody's horror story is coming from somebody else that they let touch their hair and all of this nonsense happens. You guys, you need to watch some tutorials, watch my tutorials, and figure out how to do your own hair. Because all of the stuff that you guys are going through is just totally not worth it. Like the pictures are just and you said last year in September is when this happened and in January of this year your hair just started to grow back so oh, I feel so bad and I'm so sorry that you had to experience that that is just crazy and shout out to your aunt for encouraging you to take the hairstyle out because I know some people that'll be like uh, -uh I paid my good old money you gonna deal with it it'll feel better soon but Thank goodness that your aunt was just like, you know what, get rid of it, take it out. Anyways, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm sorry that you had to experience that. I'm glad that your hair is starting to recover. Good luck on this hair journey. I'm glad that you're learning to style your own hair. You said that you're doing some protective styles. So I'm glad that everything in the end is ending up on a positive note because this story was definitely not so positive. So thank you for sharing your story with me. If any of you guys have any natural hair horror stories that you would like me to share here on my channel, you can email me. All of the information will be down below. And when you email me in the subject line, write natural hair horror story so that it doesn't get filtered out with all of my other emails. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything, you can leave them below. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.